Hey guys, what's up? So, it's at Micro Center the other day. It's a local computer store we have here in Southern California, Orange County. <clears throat> and I was actually looking at the filament. I was in the filament aisle and I saw this stuff. This uh, It's pretty expensive. It's called Protopasta Carbon Fiber Black, part number CFP11705. But I guess it's a PLA with uh, infused with carbon fiber strands and it. Uh, the sample print that they had on there actually looked awesome. You know, it looks very, very detailed. So I thought I'd give it a try because I'm going to upgrade my uh, ANET printer to, to like a solid linear X carriage. But I'll show you that in previous next videos coming up. But pretty expensive stuff. This was like uh, $34 for, I mean, it feels like about half you would normally get. So I'm guessing, uh, I guess it doesn't say. But it doesn't feel very heavy. It says here. Oh, I'll put it in the description where you can get it, I guess. Oh, 500 grams. So, um, yeah, I think I normally have like one kilogram. Like if you buy a PLA, it's twice twice the amount. But uh, if you're going to be printing with this stuff, I had already bought this already. I never showed you guys, but it's, uh, I forget the name of the company. It's here locally in uh, Costa Mesa. But it's a hardened tool steel tip for an E3D printer. And if you watch my previous videos, I just converted my uh, my printer bot to E3D, so or E3D style clone head. So this tip should work. I, I bought this be before I even converted my printer because I knew I'd be doing the E3D style thing, extra brass one. But this was like thirty bucks. It wasn't cheap. So this company actually sells super high end printers, you know, for like uh, commercial applications. But all right, I'm gonna get this loaded up on the printer bot, get the new tip on, and uh, do a sample X, Y, Z cube, and see how it looks compared to my uh, other one. So right now I'm actually printing on my printer bot because it's actually printing way more detailed than my ANET. They're both running Marlin 1.1.19. .1 um, the only difference is I put that E3D clone head on there, but the linear, linear van seems to be dialed in because it's, it, the, the printer, the prints are way high, more high quality than the uh, ANET. So, all right, we'll get this going. I got my tip changed out here. I just want to show you something real quick. This stuff is very brittle. So it really actually feels like spaghetti pasta. Look at that. So, be careful. I had snapped a piece coming into my um, filament tube here. So, I might have to take it outside the filament tube, maybe. Let's see. But, alright, so get this going. I'm going to heat it up and uh, prime this thing, and then we'll uh, do a test cube here. Right, so I've had a lot of failed prints here trying to figure out how this stuff works. Um, this is definitely not going to be a Bowden setup. Uh, this probably won't work. work. Ah, there, thermal shut down again. Um, got to figure out some of that. But um, so yeah, the, it seems it, this stuff's so abrasive that it sticks in the in this filament tube. So yeah, that's why they actually say it's it's better for a direct drive system here. But, uh, God, I gotta figure out why this thing keeps on shutting down. So, I'm actually running this at about 230 degrees. Um, the guy that actually I bought the steel tip said, steel tip from, said, uh, bring it up by about five degrees. But, I'm trying to figure out what's, uh, why this thing keeps on shutting down. It seems like it wants to get off the first layer, like the fan is. I don't know, I'll figure it out. All right. All right, guys, back here. So I thought I'd do my final review here of this uh, this new filament. All right, so I have a couple different cubes here. I have 200, 210, 220, and 228. I can only go up to 228. Um, for some reason, my uh, I was getting like a thermal overload or thermal thermal runaway, and uh, I think it's my power supply is not powerful enough to power this new uh, E3D hot end. So I need to get a better power supply for the for the printer bot, but. Um, but the quality is like remarkable compared to like PLA or uh, PETG. Uh, I don't do ABS on that printer just because it doesn't have a heated bed yet. So, um, but it is my only direct drive printer. So um, that's one of the keys. You can't do this in a Bowden setup. So if you have like a Bowden setup like this, it's going to wear out that PTFE tube in two seconds. So it, the, the material is just way too abrasive. You can just feel how abrasive it is. It would just tear up that tube in like two seconds. So. Um, yeah, you definitely need a direct drive for that, uh, printing this kind of abrasive stuff, and, uh, 
I'm actually using a hardened steel tip, so you'll definitely need a hardened steel tip of some sort. Hardened steel or chrome lined or what is it called? Like a the Micro Swiss sells one that's like a copper or it's brass with like a chrome lining or something, something like that on there. So okay, so let's go through here and uh, so at 200 degrees, it was a little bit not as good. A um, couple little some like fraying there. I'm not sure if they, what they call that again, herring or fraying or whatever it's called, but. Um, and this was 210. This definitely got better. Um, this was actually my first print, the, the 220. And this is actually, I think, is the best, the 220. I'm trying to get that in the light so maybe you can see it all. Maybe, uh, I mean, just the detail on this thing is incredible. Um, I mean, look how, look how defined that letter Z is and the X. And that's 220, the Y. But look at the Z. So the, the 228 actually seems like it's pretty good too. I, I wish I could print it to like 235, 240 and see what happens, but the, the letters seem like they're really crisp, but the outside seems to like get a little more rough. Um, so it doesn't seem as clear. So all around, I think the 220 degree, or 200, yeah, 220 degree Celsius. I'm always thinking Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit in my head, American. So pretty cool stuff I'm gonna print a bunch of uh, I'm gonna be converting this printer over to like uh, linear rods because I can't stand this wheel setup here what's it comes with the uh, a net all the wheels everywhere so um, so that's actually why I wanted to mess with this filament and print some really good stuff out but but look how brittle this stuff is this stuff just like snaps in like half a second it's so brittle you gotta be careful of that so I already snapped it a couple times just moving the filament around so but for my printer, I'm running a printer bot simple metal with a E3D clone hot end with a uh, steel tip. And 220 was the best for my printer. So, But I'm sure it's going to be different for other people's printers. But awesome, awesome filament. I mean, this is probably this is the highest quality thing I've ever printed out of that printer. When it comes to detail, I mean, look at that. Put that in the mirror light again. I mean, look at that. Look how sharp that Z is. That's incredible. Yeah, it's it's definitely a very, it's way more matte too. The color compared to like uh, I mean that's that's PETG right there. That's a lot more has a little more sheen to it. But awesome stuff. So now I'm gonna start putting out the parts, the uh, linear rods guides for this thing. So and the carriage. So awesome, cool stuff. Kind of expensive, but. Uh, I mean, the print qualities are amazing, so awesome, guys.